what we see is an opportunity to basically, as I say, take military-grade technology and make it available at toy prices. Drones right now are associated with weapons and privacy invasions and all sorts of scary military stuff, predators and global hawks, etc. But I can imagine a day where you drive around here in farm country and you see robot crop dusters overhead. You go to the beach and there's and wind surfers are followed by drones with cameras. That, that the sky could be dark with these things. I have no idea why and what we'll be doing with them. But what I do know is that the technology is getting cheap and easy enough so this could be possible. And you know, just look at this list of things. You have personal drone. So, you know, 50 years ago, computers were mainframes. And then Jobs and Wozniak said, well, and, and Gates and Allen and others said, what about personal computers? What about computers on your desktop? And it changed the world. And when you add personal to industrial technologies, what's important is not that just that they're cheaper and easier, it's that they get in the hands of a different class of user. And to sort of, you know, the internet used to be a military technology, and now we all use it. We don't think of the internet as being a weapon anymore. We don't think of it as being defense department stuff. And I think the same thing's going to happen with drones. I think we're going to think of drones as being something that's useful, something that's personal, something that we see commonly, and it doesn't freak us out. Now, we're not there yet, but that's our ambition, to sort of demilitarize drones, to destigmatize them by simply making them cheap and easy and, and, and available. Look at that word disposable drone. Now, the military doesn't think about disposable drones. These things are considered top secret. When they fall behind military lines, they send like a Humvee to retrieve them. They're super classified. And we're like, but what if they cost $50? You know, if a disposable drone, what if you sent out 100 and 80 came back? But the mission was accomplished. You got, you got the imagery you needed. Or what if, you know, if they're disposable, if they're not intended to come back, it doubles the range, right? They just go out. So the battery's exhausted, they fall on the ground. What if you drop them from planes to get close-up views of things? Disposable is not something a military industrial complex does very well, unless it comes to meals or ammunition, especially not when it comes to aerospace. And when you think of these things as basically just, you know, toys with, with kind of, you know, super smart brains, then you can think about disposability as a feature. And that cost dimension is something that the defense contractors of the world don't really explore, but communities explore really well. So this is what happens when you, when, you, when you get this box. When you buy this box, the first thing you do is you download the software and it says, what would you like this box to be? Would you like this box to be a robot car controller, a robot plane controller, a traditional helicopter controller, or any one of these multi-copter configurations? You just click on one and now this box becomes an autopilot for that kind of vehicle. And this has really never existed before, the notion of a universal autopilot. And it's just simply possible because it's an open platform. And people who know something about every one of these contributed to the code to, to allow it to do that, that one thing well. Um, that, that's again, makes in the same way a personal computer was a general purpose computing device. It could be a video game device, or a spreadsheet device, or an email device, or a phone device, depending on the software. We think the same thing is possible with an open platform for, for robotics, and in this case, uh, APM. Um, when I say drone, I mean fully autonomous, right? You can fly at RC if you want, but that's not what it's there for. This is the, the mission planner, and what, what you do is you just click on the screen and you, you, I, you give it waypoints, an unlimited number of waypoints, by the way. Oh, did I mention it's all free? All, all the software is free, it's all, all open, and each waypoint can have, can have scripted, can have, can have commands. It can be a takeoff or a landing or loiter, or keep the camera on something, or switch altitudes. Um, you, can, you can just sort of click on all, all, all the points and do the mission that way. And then when you're done, you just say go. It takes off, does the mission, lands by itself. And then you just uh, you know, do, do what you want with the imagery. Or you can even, if you want, script it with like Python and do it, you know, super complex stuff. But the point is, it's autonomous. You know, you can fly it if you want, but that's not the point. The point is it flies itself. And not only that, but you can have multiple ones in the air at the same time. So in, on the military world, the drones are like 30 people to operate one drone. We think one person ought to operate 30 drones, or maybe 300, or maybe 3,000. But that's what autonomy allows us to do. And you know, when you look at swarming and you look at clouds out there, just imagine the entertainment potential of drones as pixels in a 3D floating screen. That's what gets possible when these things cost just tens of dollars rather than tens of thousands of dollars. Um, 
here, you know, one thing we take really seriously is, um, is, is safety and sort of using them as a aid to RC modeling. Um, right now, when I, I'm a terrible pilot, and my children are much better than me, but as I was teaching them, we crashed. We crashed a lot. And so what we introduced was the notion of what's called a geofence. So a geofence is a three-dimensional box. And you just sort of say, this is the box on our field. The aircraft cannot lead the box. So you basically define the box there. You, decide, and you give it a center point. And this is a, um, this is a data log of what happens. So basically, every time it hits the edge of the box, it takes command away from you when you're flying RC, flies back to that, that return point, and then gives command back to you. So if you can give a controller to a kid, and you can, they can just like slam the stick forward, try to crash on the ground, the moment it gets to the, leaves the box, poof, snaps back into, into you know, autonomous control, goes to the middle, and then loiters, waiting for you to take over manual command as well. That, you know, just think of that as a, as, a, as a training tool. You can't go wrong. It's an uncrashable you know, aircraft. Um, and that includes both airplanes, multi-copters, and traditional helicopters. Um, we, uh, I should, as, you, as you heard, I, mean, I didn't come from the RC world. I got interested in this through robotics. And I actually know very little about RC. But what I do know is that when we try to, we want to introduce this to millions of people. And we know that we think that RC is just too complex right now. Um, you know, to, to, to understand receivers and transmitters and servos and the connectors and all this kind of stuff, it's too complex for most, most people. What people want is smartphones and they want tablets. And so the, the, the interface is going forward because these are autonomous. By the way, a tablet is a terrible way to fly an aircraft. I don't know if you use an AR drone, et cetera, but it's a bad interface, tilting it, moving it in fingers, et cetera. But if you're not flying it, if it's a programming interface, a tablet's great. So this is a, this is a, a ground station that supports our, 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 um, our autopilot. It's called Mavilus, and, it's, and that's it rendered on an iPad. And when you realize that you go to the field, and like imagine a Hollywood, a Hollywood filmmaker. You've got a set. Right now, that camera's on a boom. And there's a camera, there's a boom operator who moves it around, or maybe it's a manned helicopter, um, and you need professionals doing it. What if instead the cameraman could take out his iPad, look at an aerial view or a, just a three-dimensional view of the set, and then just trace on a finger the path that the camera should do? So it should go, it should go out 400 feet, then kind of swing around and zoom in, and then stay five feet away from these two, these two actors as they're talking with the camera focused, and then just kind of swing around and capture the scene. That's a hard thing to do with a boom, especially getting out the 400, 400 foot bit. It's a hard thing to do with a manned, uh, manned helicopter, getting that close to actors, but it's an easy thing to do with a drone. And so using a tablet as an interface allows us, allows people who don't know how to fly, who aren't experienced with robotics, to basically not worry about it. Don't, don't control the drone, control the camera. What do you want the camera to do? Let the autopilot do the work of figuring out what that means. So we think that, that uh, mobile interfaces are definitely the, the way to go. Um, this is a product that we're going to be releasing um, uh, uh, early this year. It's called a Follow Me Box. So you're, you know, uh, how many people here have a GoPro camera? Great. Okay, so you know how cool GoPros are and what a revolution they've been in sports in sports uh, video. Um, that windsurfer, it's actually really hard to get a good shot of a windsurfer because. First of all, they're away from the shore. And second of all, you kind of want to be from an aerial altitude. You want to get that top-down view. So what we're developing is a, is a, is a box that a windsurfer or a kite surfer or whatever would have on their belt. And when they're really kicking it, when they're really doing well, they would push the button, and the multi-copter would come up, take off off the beach, and then position themselves right 30 feet up, above, 30 feet behind the windsurfer, and just follow them as they do their thing with the camera trained on them. And when the uh, battery gets low, it flies itself back to the shore. Um, that, uh, that, uh, that, that's not actually the box. Uh, that's, a, that's a prototype. It's, uh, we're using Raspberry Pi as the underlying platform. Um, the actual box will be waterproof, needless to say. Um, but, um, but that's the kind of function that, that you, know, you don't think of drones being personal video droids. You don't think of drones being extreme sports. You don't think of drones on the beach. But that's, I think you're going to start to see that stuff more commonly. You can already start to see them in the Bay Area where, where I live. So that's another kind of surprising example that came out of the community. Um, by the way, it has been done by some other platforms already. Um, we'd like to um, release this as a product 
that uh, the, the box is something you can just buy and uh, press the button when you're ready.